Today I want to talk about the Canon 6D. It came out in 2012 and it's still a fantastic camera for today. It's 20 megapixels, full frame sensor. It's very similar to the Canon R6 in that area. Um, it has a shutter speed that goes from 100 to 25,600. I would keep it below 12,000, but it can do that. Doesn't mean you should. It, um, it has a three inch thick screen on the back, so it don't have a flippy screen, so you're kind of stuck with that. But again, this is 10 year old technology. It has, a, it has an optical viewfinder on it, so what you see through the, the lens is what you get. It's not the electronic viewfinder like the new one. It has built-in wireless, it has built-in GPS, it has face detection, it has an external microphone, and it's also a very good camera for shooting in low light. So if you're a wedding photographer, this is a really good camera. Mostly this camera I would recommend for people that are just getting started into weddings. It's a DSLR, it's made like a tank, although it's, they say it's not fully weather sealed. Um, I've got the Canon 24 to 72.8 on there and it is weather sealed. But if you're just getting started in photography, instead of buying a more expensive APS-C crop camera, I would definitely look, because KEH has these starting at $240 up to $380. And they, they're made to last, they're fantastic. You get the full frame, um, no adapters needed, uh, like some of the new RF cameras where you have to have the adapters to put the EF lenses on it. This is an EF lens mount. It does have a flash sync port on it, so that's nice. That's good to have. Now, it will only do four and a half frames a second, but again, if you're doing weddings, four and a half frames a second is plenty enough. I, you know, the new ones have up to 20 or even more than that, up to 40. But, you know, I shot weddings with this camera for probably eight years on weddings. I never had one time where I needed more than four and a half frames a second. It just does a fantastic job. It's all mechanical shutter. There's no electronic shutter on the camera. There are a lot of good lenses you can get for this camera. You can get the Canon 16 to 35. You can get the Canon 24 to 72.8, which is what I have on here, or you can get the Canon 70 to 210. Um, and on that one, you can get the F4. You can get the F4 with image stabilization, or you can get the 2.8. I would recommend to save money. I would get the uh, 70 to 210 that is F4 with image stabilization, because the image stabilization will be really helpful when you're doing that distance of 200. So you really could use that. The camera is really good in low light. I think I mentioned this, but shooting weddings, you know, when the lights go off for the ceremony, you can turn this thing up to, you know, really pretty high ISO, 6400, 12,800, and get some very, very good pictures, especially with the new software that we have that will reduce. I know Photoshop has a denoise in it, and so I would have no qualms with going over 12,000 on this and maybe running it through denoise, you'd be fine. One thing I don't like about it a whole lot is it only has one memory card slot. I like to have two memory card slots because memory cards will fail, but we never had a problem with one failing on this one. But when I'm shooting a wedding, I'll, if I'm shooting, say I shoot the guys first, I go download. Then I go shoot the girls, I go download. I don't get hundreds and hundreds of pictures on a card before I go download them. I get them downloaded as quickly as possible. That way they're on the card and they're on my computer and I have an external hard drive that I'll stick into my computer to back them up. So you know, you won't just want a lot of backups everywhere you can get them at a wedding. So you can't have too many, too much stuff can go wrong and a wedding's not the place where you want to have issues. Now, the one thing about this camera compared to the new mirrorless, it doesn't have the crazy good auto focus. You still have to, you know, frame up your shot and find the focal point and, and get it on with that. But if you, if you have been shooting with DSLRs, it's the same. It's even the same in the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, it don't have the new focusing technology, but uh, you know, I've been shooting for 37 years and I've had a Canon R6 for a couple of months now. So you can get by without that crazy autofocus. It is fantastic, but the difference in price, if you go with this for say $300, getting the body full frame versus getting a new crop sensor for $1,500, I think you'd be much better off as a wedding photographer or portrait photographer going with this. You get the better depth of field, you get better low light. It's just, it's just a much better camera as far as that's concerned. And plus it's full frame sensor with 20 megapixels. So your low light is going to be better because the pixels that are on the sensor are bigger. So you won't get as much grain in low light. And like I said earlier, it don't have a flippy screen. You can only see it on the back, which is a little bit of a disadvantage if you're shooting low or shooting high. You can't flip the screen to see it. But again, for the savings and money, it's just a fantastic camera. Of course, it's got the hot shoe on the top. Um, you can connect go dots, you can connect your Canon flashes, however you want to do it. You can go off camera, whatever you want to do it, you got it right there. It's got the dial mode on top, and then it's got the LCD screen on the left. Um, it's got a little light that you can push and see if you're in a dark room so you can see what your settings are. Uh, this is really an overall good camera, but what I would highly recommend, now this camera, the batteries last forever, but I always put the battery grip on it 
and put two batteries in there and I can't think of a wedding that I shot that I had to change the batteries when I had two Canon batteries in there. I was getting well over a thousand to fifteen hundred shots with two Canon batteries in there. Now I had extra batteries with me but they seem to always last through the wedding so and that's fantastic you don't have to fool with the, all the because i know the new canon i love my new canon r6 but the batteries die so quick i've got eight batteries i keep some in my pocket um you're using that electronic viewfinders on all the time and so the batteries are just dying in a hurry on those even though they have upgraded the batteries a little bit you're still going to get you're still going to run into the need for extra batteries because it's going to go down fast this one is just way better on battery life so no comparison but um it's just kind of a trade-off more technologies is more batteries so but this camera again does fine i mean you can take get a 24 by 30 print of this and it will be perfect i mean it's just fantastic um you can shoot raw i shoot raw um you can shoot jpeg i don't recommend shooting jpeg if you're shooting weddings that sort of stuff you don't have much control over the editing process now it does take up more room and you're on the card and on your camera to shoot raw but it's worth it so that you can go in and edit later. It's, it, you really need to be able to do that. So I would highly recommend shooting in RAW. Um, they have different size RAWs. Um, I think this one is a one or two difference. I always go with the largest RAW. I know it takes up the most space, but the more you, info you have, the more info you can change later. So I highly recommend shooting in the highest RAW setting that it has. And if you need some JPEG, you can have it shoot you know, the highest uh, raw quality and then shoot maybe a medium JPEG if you want to go that way. Because a medium JPEG, if it looks really good, you can still get good prints from a medium JPEG, at least up to an eight by 10, probably even a little higher. But, um, you know, I just shoot raw. It's just something I started doing a long time ago and I'm just stuck in my ways. Uh, the Canon also has a mechanical shutter. Like I said, four and a half frames a second. It doesn't have the electronic shutter. That's just newer technology. That and the focusing, this camera does not have. But when you're shooting a wedding and you look at the quality from the 20 megapixels on here, it's going to be about the same as the 20 megapixels on R6. Although the R6 does have a new processor, so it will be somewhat better. But if you're just starting in photography, getting into it, shooting weddings or portraits, a full frame camera for $350 that's going to last like this. I think the shutter life is a hundred, maybe 150,000 on this. It's mine's still going strong. I don't know how many I've got on it, but I've never had any of the shutters go bad, knock on wood. <laughs> but, um, check out the Canon R6. It, I'm sorry, not the Canon R6. That's a great camera too, but the Canon 6D, yeah, KEH, probably MPB, all these, you can get one really low priced and I would recommend it over one of the new mirrorless crop sensors if you're doing weddings. So anyway, um, if you have any questions down below, just write me a question, send me an email, I'll be glad to answer it. So right after I quit talking about this, I'm going to show you some pictures that I've done of models and you can see the quality that comes out of the 6D. So y'all check it out. And if you're liking our channel, we're helping you out. Please hit subscribe. Have a good day. Thank you.